where there is discord or in the South Atlantic we're gonna go ahead and take a look at a turn of this um, it's I don't know it's kind of been frustrating me um, first off well let's let's like a, take a look at the board um, so I'm on we'll be playing turn eight I've played a couple turns. There's only been a couple attacks so far. It seems like the attacking happens in the last two weeks, uh, which is part of my issue. Um, I don't like games where you're doing stuff and nothing happens. Um, that was my issue with Picket Duty. Uh, B29 was similar in that there are turns where nothing, nothing really happens. Um, but you're having to play through all these steps to even see that that, that doesn't happen. Uh, and that's typically not as big of a deal as it is here. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. But here's the board. Um, pretty big. It's taking up my full drafting table here. Um, and it probably doesn't need to be. Uh, these counters aren't this big for a reason. There's not really any information on them except for the ground forces do have these steps on them. Um, but other than that, we can see this just has basically the name of this group. And then on the back there's a little CRT. Um, but um, Event cards, we can look at one that's already been drawn. <laughs> No event text on here. It's just a number and a picture. Uh, there, it's it's pretty. Uh, but then you come over here and look in this book, and it gets dropped all the time. And find out what the event text is. Uh, a lot of this text is pretty lengthy, so I see why they did it this way. Um, it's not a huge deal. They're ordered in here, which is nice. Um, as opposed to in the rules, and let's let's just get into the rules. So it's a game where you're kind of following all these steps. This is one turn on this sequence of play. Uh, you get into the first page of the rules, and well, I'll just read this. It says, do not be discouraged by the length of the rules. They are intentionally written in a detailed step-by-step -step style with examples and commentary throughout. The game itself is not particularly complex once you've gotten into the swing of things. It's best to set up and play along as you go through the rules for the first time. That's that's great. So that's what I sit, sat down to do. I typically like to read the rules and digest them uh, before actually playing, but that's what it encouraged me to do. That's, that's what I did. So setups here and that all works. Turn track. And it's talking about the elements of the game, but it's also telling you how to play the game. It's telling you how to play the game as it's telling you what these things are. And that just doesn't work uh, because you get to about uh, section five, the scramble roll, and you're thinking, okay, but where does this happen? So let's look at the sequence of play. Advanced turn marker is rule section one. That's great. The next step should be section two, right? If we're following along. It's section 19. This is the last thing in the rules. It's the second thing you do on a turn. So how do I follow along on a turn if the second thing that happens in that turn doesn't happen until the end of the rules? Events aren't covered until 16. Uh, and then we get back to two. And then we're at three. Okay, that makes sense. But from three, we don't go to 3.1, we go to 18. And then we don't go to 19 or 18.1, we go to 13.1, and then back to 3.1. The rules aren't written in a way that you can actually follow along. So you end up following with this, uh, which I don't mind. I'll end up doing that anyway, even if I have the rules digested. But I would like to follow along page by page. When you make a weather roll, um, that's another thing. Instead of just having a weather track or something, you have... 12 chits for the different types of weather. Um, so I have to flip back here, and it's not the last page of the rules, even though it's the last section of the rules, really. We have to get, we have to find 19 to assess this, and then we look at our turn chart again. We go to 16 to look at how we handle events, 
And then we have to flip all the way back to section two. So that's three steps of the rules or the sequence of play. Uh, we've turned the page three times. That's, that's not conducive to easy play. The other thing, there's 28 turns in this game. Each turn is taking me uh, about 25 minutes right now. Even if nothing happens, it's about 20. Uh, so even with 20 minute turns, uh, if I get attacked, it, it, it gets to about 25. I don't want to play this game for 14 hours. Um, that's just it, of play time. That's, that's way, way too much. Uh, there's not like a second two week scenario, which would be seven hours. That's still way too much. Um, I, I understand why it's there. It's trying to present the entire conflict in one game. Um, but I'm on turn eight and I'm just about tired of having this on my table. It's, it's engaging, um, trying to pick the right uh, forces to put out. Um, you you kind of tend to defend your front line here and then planes get behind you or ships get behind you and attack your rear. Um, so those decisions are interesting to me. But the game doesn't make it easy to play and then it's going to take you 14 or 15 hours to play it. That's it. Uh, that's just way too much. Uh, if it was a $50 game, that's not gonna be a big deal. Uh, I can kind of get through it and uh, lesson learned. If I wanna come out and tinker with it a little bit, that's fine. The way this game is sold, I paid $140 for it. Um, and it's supposed to be lavish and, um, you know, it's, it's meant to be that big on purpose but then it doesn't make it easy for you to play. Um, the other complaint I have is this is the third printing of this game, and it just came out. I'm not sure when these were written, um, but there are 14 pages of errata that aren't addressed. Uh, this has been out, I guess, since version one, or printing one. Uh, they do subsequent reprintings. They get uh, subsequently more expensive uh, without actually addressing any of the issues in this errata, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, there's no reason they couldn't go back through this rule book and fix the stuff before they hit print again. Um, it's, that's, that's inexcusable to me. If you have errors, uh, I understand putting out a rata, that's fine. Um, it's it's going to happen, uh, but don't then reprint everything knowing there are still errors and you're not going to do anything to fix it. It's ridiculous. Uh, so. You guys can uh, struggle with me through some of this. I'm not going to subject you to all of the rules reading and such. Um, but so the first thing we do, I just put that there to remind me what step I'm on. We advance the turn track. That's step one. And I moved this out of the way. So now we're going to make a roll on the weather, which again is on 19. So if you can experience this. And there is one thing to note in a game. Uh, there's a capital D12, which is 2D6, and then a lowercase, which is D12. Nine, which means weather marker nine comes out. It's foggy. Uh, Oh, it's cloudy, sir. Uh, the scramble modifier is plus one, and the recovery is plus ten. We're at ten. We're good there. So now we do our event card. Sixteen. Come to our little book and find sixteen. Uh, it came like that with the crease in the pages, which is always fun, along with the dinged up cover. Uh, intelligence reports indicate that. Private German contractors are assisting the Argentines with manufacture of radar facilities. You may pressure German government to recall the contractors or take no action. Uh, and those have. We'll take no action uh, as long as this remains on the board. The scramble modifier is modified by minus one, which is fine. Uh, so to get rid of that, we would have to do this. 
um, but that makes international opinion fall, uh, which kind of gives the Argentines a bit of an advantage. Uh, we must have some room to spare, so we'll take that down and then not have that modifier, and then this just goes away. Uh, you do kind of have to display which ones have been played because some subsequent events might refer to those. Now what we do is, uh, you don't have to do this step, um, but early in the game, if you don't, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get to do anything really. Um, and this is actually representing the task force moving closer to Argentina. And as this changes, um, as you get closer to the uh, uh, to Argentina, uh, they become more aware of what's going on, and they'll attack more, or they'll attack, uh, meaning they actually are defending themselves against this British invasion. Not music, um, actual military, uh, slightly different. Uh, so we don't really have to do anything there. We just flip the card up, and then we'll reference that as as the game goes along. So let's figure out where we are. Uh, the task force deployment is kind of all over the place. I've been leaving it as it is. Um, I got it set up, and if something were to get killed, I would rearrange to to make up for it. Um, but we're not going to do that. We will. Um, do we want? Yeah. So now we get to put carriers out um, where we want them. When you're rolling on here, it's typically a, a 2d6. So these areas are more likely to be attacked, uh, which is what those red dots are, is the probability. Uh, so we can put these out. We have a red group and a blue group um, from Hermes and uh, Invincible. We'll just put these out, and these are just kind of escorting the, the surface ships uh, in the sky. The thing there is, as you put these out, they need a day to recover. So at the end of the game, at the end of the turn, they'll they'll come in here, and then you have to wait. So these are the guys who flew yesterday. Um, we have a couple out here, but sometimes events call to put these guys out and that kind of thing. So you want to keep keep a stack of of Harriers ready to attack. Um, we can change where this SAS comes out of or goes to. Um, I've been attacked from up here, so I thought about maybe doing that, but these guys are pretty ineffective. Um, it, it probably makes sense to the, sorry, this is a surveillance team, and they'll kind of give you an idea of what's what's attacking. Uh, we're we're going to keep it on the dagger. Uh, I would also put it on the Mirage, uh, but the, the French helped me out, and uh, I have some some defensive bonuses against mirages for that event which is why that card is there uh now we get to put out uh while we're doing that that our subs come out we can change where these guys are patrolling uh, this guy is still out from last time there's no other subs out so we won't place those uh, now we're going to roll for these surface deployment uh, these surface task force groups uh, will roll a d4, d6, d8. On a roll of a 1, they're going to come out into the port. 4, 6, and 8. Uh, these dice all come with the game. You probably only ever need 3. Uh, for some reason, there's 4 in two different colors. Uh, they did decide to change this. I guess it used to be blue and red. Now it's black and white. I think I'd rather have blue. Uh, no ones. So none of those guys are going to come out. They stay off board. They're kind of doing their thing. This guy's dead. Uh, so since there's no navy, we're, we're here on G. We're going to skip down all the way to K. We were in uh, roll section 13. What comes after that? 14. But no, we're going to actually reference section 5 of the rules. And what we do there is roll a d10, and we'll modify it by this. And we need to be under this number here, which is a four. Uh, we're at nine, 10, nothing happens. Uh, so we go to the end of the turn. Oh, 
Well, we'll keep that. I forgot that this guy was out. Uh, so we do we do uh, search missions here. I'll, I'll keep that for that. Uh, we'll do search missions here. These are going to roll dice. They need a wand to try to find this guy. Uh, we come over here. So this was kind of confusing to me, um, the way this chart is set up, but it's what you're searching or attacking with and then where you're searching against what. This is surface and this is submarine. So we are in a British sub searching in the coastal against a sub. We're going to roll six. Uh, a six-sided die, that is. So we have two subs searching for one. On a roll of a one, they would try to find them. That doesn't work. Uh, now we can see if the Argentinian sub, the Argentine sub, does the same thing. It's going to roll a d8, which makes us less likely to roll a one. And it doesn't do it. Uh, so he's going to keep patrolling there, and nothing happens. So then we do our scramble roll. That didn't happen. Uh, so we're all good. These guys come back home. Oh, I didn't make the... Yeah. What I didn't do... is... Uh, check to see if supply had come out. So I'm going to dedicate two guys to the supply roll. I'm trying to not actually follow this thing step by step because it really slows me down. Uh, but what I skipped is this supply interdiction. Um, so you dedicate uh, planes to do that and you're gonna roll again that's on 15 you're gonna roll some dice 